Welcome to chapter 3 guys. As you can see the name here is crude operations. Fun fact, if you switch the U and R it becomes curd operations. So what does this stand for? It stands for C is for create, R is for read, U is for update and D is for delete. Okay, so these are the things that we'll be doing in this chapter. We'll be creating data, we'll be reading the data, that means we'll be checking the data, what is in the table, we'll be updating the data because that is required sometimes and finally we will be deleting unrequired data so these are the things that uh, i just discussed inserting data querying data updating data re deleting and finally replacing okay guys so i think this is going to be the last time that we will be using the terminal after this we will be actually using workbench to write the sql queries and uh, that way we will be able to graphically see the data and it will be a lot quicker and we already have a database that is there that we had imported in chapter one so we will be using that for querying and a lot of other stuff like updating deleting and stuff so let's get started first of all to insert data we need to first know in which database we want to insert so first let's check check the databases now we had just created this my new databases uh, sorry my new db so let's say we want to insert something in this database so first we use my new db okay so the database is changed and now we uh, see the tables which tables we have okay now see uh, let's remember this thing because this is not in this chapter at the moment so let's now we know uh, we want to insert something in table persons because that's the only table at the moment so let's say we want to insert something in table persons now we forgot what columns we had created so what columns did we have because we will be inserting data in those columns so to do that you just go describe describe table persons and here you can see the age the data type uh, either null is allowed or not and the default value okay we will go over what this key and what this extra is uh, later so for now what we need to know is age is integer name is a varchar address is varchar and we are going to be inserting age name and address of some persons okay so here is how we do it first we go insert into and then we write table uh, table name that is table underscore persons and then you write values again this is not necessarily required to be capital I'm just doing it because it's more readable that way so let's say the age is 23 name is yeah alphabets you have to keep it in this uh, code so uh, let's say the name is my name is Vishal let's enter Vishal and I'm definitely not 23 I'm older than 23 so my address is I am in Nepal so this is all now hit enter sorry so put semicolon and then hit enter as you can see one row is affected okay now now how do you see if that is affect, uh, inserted or not so to do that you just go select asterisk see the asterisk is a uh, symbol for all so if you write asterisk that means everything will be selected from where from where do you want to select everything from the table persons so we go select all from table underscore persons and that is all as you can see we have one data that is age is 23 name is Vishal and address is Nepal all right so one more thing now while inserting let's say you have uh, right now 23 is directly corresponding to the first column so it is inserted in age Vishal is directly uh, corresponding to the second column so it is inserted in name and address is in third column so it is inserted in address so it is insert inserted according to order now let's say there is a lot of there are a lot of columns and we don't know the exact order in which values are there so 
by mistake we added we entered Nepal here and then we entered Vishal here so what do we do then if you press enter as you can see as you can select now as you can see it is wrong the name is Nepal and address is Vishal uh, if, if you have a lot of columns and there is a lot of data so it's a good practice to define in which column should be enter which data so this is how we had entered it but uh, we don't know the order of the columns, so we just write here insert first thing should be age and then uh, we will write name and then we will be writing address so accordingly here we first write name and then sorry first we write age and then we write name and then we write the address okay and then if you press enter as you can see now age has 23 name has Vishal and address has Nepal so pretty cool right so I think this is all we were doing in the command line now we will be using workbench for the next chapters so let's just go over quickly what we did in this short session so first of all we inserted data into a table using insert into ta insert into table and then values okay and then we selected everything from the table select all from table persons and then finally we learned how to enter data uh, according to the column so uh, if we write the order of columns here and that's where how we write the values and this this is the order in which the values will be inserted okay if we have not entered anything here then it will be inserted according to the order that uh, actually exists in the table okay so now we will learn how to insert a default value of a column so let's hover over the, this employees table and click this settings thing now what this opens up is, is opens up the column name the data type these are the primary keys not null unique keys the kind of stuff and this is more things that we will go over in later chapters so but for now the thing that matters to us is this default expression as you can see uh, there is no defaults for most of the things but this office code or reports to reports to is null by default now if you want to make some other things default to you can buy here uh, by this using workbench it's pretty simple it's just ui stuff so let's say by default job title is uh, sales executive if you don't have anything for your job title you are a sales executive okay then you just hit apply and then hit apply again now this is where the query actually is this is this is the query that is executed behind the scenes so you might want to take some time and try to understand what this is before we actually reach this chapter so that will be good for you if you understand okay now hit apply and hit finish now the default expression for job title is sales executive okay now let's click this browse button again and you can see the data that already is so now we will insert into products now what are the columns let's say product code oh, sorry not products table we were using employees table we created this in employees table right so open up employees table and here you enter the employee let's say insert into employees and you can write the column names here in any order that you want but that is the same order in which you will have to insert the values so I'll just write the order in which it exists in table so I am EMPL employee number comma last name comma first name comma extension okay 
inside the device these things are done and then you will be entering values so what do you want input number to be let's just say it's one 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 and last name is Barry don't forget the quotes Barry first name is Matthew and then what do we have we have extension let's say the extension is sorry for whatever I entered now this should this is a string too so this is the extension and email is very at org dot org and office code is let's say one reports to one zero zero two and job title what is the job title job title is default so that becomes what what does it become uh, we have entered default to be sales executive right so now put this colon semicolon and hit control enter and now if you click this browse button again as you will see okay where is it it did not work very matter one 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 okay select all control a and then press this button select all from employees why is this not working now see if this kind of stuff happens to you what you can also do is what is the correct way to do it the so if you want to check this is the beauty of workbench let's say you write the same things here one 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 last name is Perry first name is Matthew extension is whatever you want to write P E R Y at the rate C L A S S I C M O D E L cars dot com and office code is one reports to one zero zero two and this is default now if you hit apply you will actually see the insert queries right so this is the query and you can copy it here from here okay don't apply it copy it from here and you can put it below this thing and you can compare what where could you have been gone wrong okay So, do you see where you are wrong? Now, there are other things like this is in capital and this is in small, it does not matter. And they have used what is this? This quotes here, and this is this dot dot employee. So, it's saying classic model dot employee, that means the employee table of classic models. But you don't have to worry about that now. So, these things are practically the same. This means practically the same. Now, the difference is in here. See, now. In office code I made a foolish mistake and I've just written office code after email so this thing is extra so for now I decided this and try to hit run again and you can actually check the output here and you can see in certain employees there was an error table my new db dot employees does not exist so it does not exist now as you can see this my new db is selected because this is in bold and our classic models is not in bold all right so this is how a developer's life is guys you know you get problems you fix it but for now let's say instead of just employees let's write c l a s s classic models dot employees 
have attached as models at e m p l o y e e s okay now you if you click this one this whole thing will be selected and then hit this run thing and now there's one more error unknown column extension in field list so unknown column extension so i misspelled it it's e e x t e n s extension extend s i o n now click one again hit run again the trend now this is entered one row affected so now if you go here and if you run this again you will see okay one row was affected then did didn't wasn't it it was so where is matthew come on matthew where are you here is matthew and matthew came up here and see or uh, the thing that we were trying to do was to enter default value but we gave, went to so much trouble to do this so thing <laughs> the most important thing that we learned in this tutorial was it's not actually the default thing it's actually how to solve a problem when you are actually creating something developing something okay so now this is here because uh, it's uh, sorted according to imply number and this is how we use default value we just write default keyword without the quotes okay so now guys we will be learning how we can insert the current date or current time that is today's date or the time that is now so for that let's uh, go to our my database my new db and then we only have one table here so click on this view button and now uh let's enter insert something okay so if you want to insert date or time you just have to use the current time or current date method so let me just show you insert into uh, what was this table's name T A B L E. okay so one more tip for you now as you can see i'm writing in i'm getting into solutions now our table's name was table persons now if i type t-a-b-l i'm still not getting any uh, solutions so why is that because our classic models database is selected and we don't have any table that starts with this table stuff if we write now we have customers employees and so on so if we write customers see you now we get customer solution that's why because uh, this classic models is selected now how can you select my new db now if you remember what we did in chapter one i think it was we just go use my new db and then hit Control enter and now my new db is selected okay now just one more one more may uh, one more way of doing this in workbench let me just show you first of all uh first i'll just switch back to classic models now this is again selected now if you want to use the power of workbench and not write command for that you can just double click on my new db and it will be selected pretty simple right so okay now let's get back to inserting our uh, date or time so okay now insert into table portions now let's not write the column names because we already remember we only had three columns we'll just move on to values and for some weird reason you want to insert uh, insert date in place of address so let's say it's Mike Tyson okay you don't want to mess the name of Mike Tyson that is something you just don't do and now you want to insert current date okay so you just write CURR and as you can see you already have these options just click on current date then hit control enter and as here you can see and here you can see insert into table person this thing one row affected and this green tick mark that means it was successful now if you want to view it you can again just click this thing here but for now you better write a query because that's how you learn the queries select all from table persons hit control enter and now as you can see 
Mike Tyson and the address is the state. That is, I recorded this in, I recorded this on 2nd of April. Okay. Now, for current time, as you can already guess, we just do insert into table persons values and let's say the age is 43 and this is okay what other actor do i know mm -hmm. okay i also like tom hardy <laughs> and instead of current date you just write current time and you hit control enter and now you can hit this because we gotta speed things up and now as you can see the time I am recording this 6 uh, 12 6 midnight it's 6 past midnight so that's when I'm recording this and that's how you insert date and time guys very simple if you have any queries you know what to do okay so now we will be inserting the values of one table into another table using uh, what is known as insert into select so for that Let's switch back to our classic models because we only have one table in my new DB. So you cannot move things from my new DB to you can, but why would you do that? You may want to do that, but let's not go there at the moment. So let's say uh, a practical use case. Let's say you have some suppliers. Let's say where is the suppliers table? Customers. Okay. I think I lost my supplies table. Just give me a minute. Okay, so we don't have a supplies table, so let's create a table that we will call suppliers. And let's say for some weird reason, some of your customers uh, that are situated in USA and some state are also your suppliers. So what do you need? You need some of the customers in your supplies table because let's face it, your customers can also be your suppliers. Uh, if you want to take an example let's say Amazon Amazon has its customers let's say I am the customer of Amazon I am buying iPhones and stuff but I also supply uh, Samsung phones to Amazon so I'm also the supplier and the customer of Amazon that can be a, a valid case so for that let's rewind back to our chapter 1 and let's create a table so what do you do Let's say you want to write the create table query. So I hope you remember it. Let's go. Let's see create table. Let's call it suppliers. And let's uh, let's add the columns. Now you remember we just we first write the column name. What the column name should be. Let's say uh, let's make it similar to. Uh, customer table so let's say the first name first column is supplier number and it should be where care what is the maximum length this can hold numbers are usually 10 in length so just to be safe let's make it 15 and the second column should be supplier name and let's call it where care and uh, let's say let's give it 100 just to be safe you know some people might have a long name and let's say let's leave the first and the last name okay let's say we will also have include we'll also include the address supplier address okay now address can be a bit more longer let's just call it let's just keep it keep the length at 500 okay now why is this we are getting an error why are we getting an error because we this is this is just the column name this is not a data type now hit space and hit where care so one more reason guys that's why this workbench is pretty intuitive because if we were doing this in command line you wouldn't have or i wouldn't have seen that uh, error here and i wouldn't have made this change i would have then hit the run the query and then seen the error and then made the change so this can make your task very fast okay let's leave this at this much for now uh, and then hit control enter 
and now this create tables applies this create table has successfully applied and now we must have a table here somewhere where is the table it is not here i think we need to refresh this so right click and hit refresh all now you have suppliers table now if you click this view button as you can see we have nothing here at the moment so now what was our case let's check out some of the customers you know first we need to know which customers you want this to be the suppliers so first you gotta check the customers so let's just hit select all from customers and hit control enter now let's say uh, state mm -hmm. let's select the state from where you want the customers to be suppliers let's say BC I don't know what BC is what is BC cities Vancouver okay BC is now I am kind of interested <laughs> okay forget it I'm not going to waste your time so let's say BC is in Canada let's see BC is in Canada okay now let's say you want all the customers situated in BC Canada to be the suppliers okay so you just write insert into suppliers and now since we have three columns I guess yeah three we may or we may not want to write this but for now let's add it supplier number supplier name supplier address and now I hope you remember what happens if you don't add this if you don't add this then the data that will be inserted will be inserted in this order first data will be inserted in this supplier number second data will be inserted in supplier name third data will be inserted in supply address now we have it in the same exact same order so it makes no sense to uh, write this here again but I have done it so let's not delete it and what we can do now is insert into suppliers in column name now instead of writing values what we can write is we can write another query we can write select now what do you want to select if we hit all we will get everything everything as in you will get customer number customer name customer last name customer first name phone everything but we only want three things we want to get select customer name comma contact i think there was a name field but there is not so let's say uh, you want contact why where is my solution if you don't if you're not getting solution and you want to get solution hit control space I'm not getting contact uh, just a moment please right contact last name let's say first name and then address line one from from where from which which table do you want to select these three things you want to select these three things from table customers right and now if we do this and we just run the query now everything from every uh, every customer will be copied into suppliers so the customer name cost, uh, last name sorry customer name customer first name and address line one will be copied into suppliers so everything but but what do we want we want only uh, we want only the for uh, only the customers that are situated situated in BC and uh, BC Canada so now what we need to do is we write where country equals to Canada right C A N A D A and state equals to what was the state C A 
isn't it let's check it okay the state is ca the country is no it was bc we had chosen bc but i wrote c for some reason so the state is bc the country is canada and let's let's first review the query what we did is we insert into suppliers we insert a supplier number supplier name supplier address and instead of writing the values here we selected customer name customer first name address line one so these three things will become the values for these three things now can you get the picture okay now these three things are selected from customers where the country is Canada and state is BC so now our query is filtered we will only get the customers from Canada that are living in BC now hit control enter and as you can see there's an error data truncated for column supplier number at row 1 supplier number so data truncated that means our customer see I inserted customer name in customer supplier number so data truncated means that data was shortened it was cut so the length of supplier number is shorter than the customer name for one of the customer that was selected so let's just fix the order let's fix it here and first one was customer number so customer number will be inserted in customer uh, supplier number so this thing will be inserted in supplier number okay now hit control enter as you can see now this is successfully inserted now if you go to suppliers and just hit control enter as you can see so two of the customers live in Canada, Canada BC as you can see because they are inserted in our suppliers table all right that's how you can insert things from one table to another okay so now we will learn how to use insert ignore now you can use insert ignore to uh, ignore some of the queries that don't execute and just follow up to the next queries so that it will be inserted now let's say for example let's take a customer now how do you identify a customer if we check if we click here as you can see the customer number is this tick mark is there in this customer number have you guys have opened your workbench and now you are also checking the customer table now in customer table this pk means primary key and it implies that a customer number is unique in this table so the same there can be no other customer with the same uh, number as another customer so this customer number is unique and if you know the number of a customer you can get which customer that is so uh, no two customers can have the same numbers okay so one customer identifies exactly one customer so now if by some mistake you are entering a customer and you are entering the number that is already there in the table you will get an error okay but now if you get the error and you have some other customers you are inserting multiple customers and you have some other customers below that you don't want uh, the error to stop because just one customer's number is wrong right one customer's numbers already exists you want the other values to be inserted so that's how that's why we use insert ignore now I'll just show you so you can understand better let's say let's just uh, uh, into a normal insert into queries okay insert into table customer oh, insert into customers and let's insert what are the things we are going to insert we are going to insert customer number customer name contact last name contact first name phone address line one address line two now guys I'm inserting all these things I, I am very lazy and I would have just inserted these these two 
But I'm inserting all these things for one reason. Now which one of you can guess? If you guess correctly, you get a candy from me. Okay. One of you failed. <laughs> Let me just show you. You, uh, I'm just inserting these because as you can see, till address line 1, all these not null selected. So they must have a value. Now you might have noticed while you are you were registering for Amazon or some other site, you have to enter a few things otherwise the values the data is not saved. So these are those values. So I have I'm inserting till address line one. Now insert I just copy it in case I have to type it again for some other some reason. I'm inserting into customers these things and now uh, values will be let's say uh, what's the greatest customer number? four nine six okay so let's say i'm inserting four nine seven comma name is a a a r o n last name is smith first name is a a r o n if you guys watch key key and peel then you know what a a run is pronounced like <laughs> uh, and where am I customer first name is Aaron and phone number is uh, let's write whatever you want to write and now address line one is Canada uh, let's just write Canada okay now you also want to insert some other value so let's just copy it and you paste it just change it to 499 and now hit control enter now something failed column count doesn't match value count at row 1 so how many columns have we written here 1 2 3 4 5 6 now how many things are here 1 2 3 4 5 6 at row 1 have I inserted more columns here? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Now the values are also 6. 3, 4, 5, 6 now. So now we are here back to debugging. So if you check here, I think we have missed some essential values. Yes, the city is also not null, country is also not null. And okay, so you add city and country now as you can see this is a lot helpful at cases in cases like this now we have only select a few selected columns that's how that's where this is selected this is writing this column names are is helpful okay now after that we write a city what was the city? I don't know any city. Oh, I know. Toronto is in Canada, right? And the country name is Canada. Guys, as you know, this the first Canada that I had written is not country name. It is address line one. So let's just change it to Washington Street. Now, I'm not sure if there is a Washington Street in Canada. Let's change it to TRR1. And this is also in Toronto and in Canada. Now, if you hit Control Enter, again, column count doesn't match value at row one. What am I doing wrong? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight values. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I don't think that this is not matching I inserted a country I inserted city man this is frustrating let's just remove this and check if a single and data is entered even a single data is not entering so why do you think that so guys, I have figured out the error and this is the kind of error that I usually do. I think that most of the programmers usually do. It's we missed a comma here. 
this is very frustrating you sometimes I have to spend hours and hours doing the same mistakes and you will too <laughs> you will too so you gotta be very careful with this stuff okay so now we have one two three four five six seven eight eight values and one two three four five six seven eight eight column names now let's copy this again Where did it go? Just a moment. This is an integer, and let's add. So we are inserting multiple things. Uh, it's 498, and instead of Aaron, it's the Baron, and Baron here too. Now let's try to hit Control, Enter, and as you can see, insert two rows affected and insert is successful with as you can see from the screen check mark and now if you if you click this view button as you can see we have inserted Baron and Aaron okay now let's say you are again inserting instead of Baron you are inserting uh, 500 not Baron why cannot I think of some other name? Jason. So we are inserting Jason Smith. Okay. Now if I hit Control Enter, as you can see, insert into customers. This query is failed because there is duplicate entry. Duplicate entry 497 for key customers dot primary. So that means uh, this is fine 500 because 500 number does not exist there. But this 497 already exists. So what happens when we when we do this is now the other query is also not executed as you can see 500 customer number is not executed is not there so what we can do is in this case instead of just writing insert into customers what we write is insert ignore so now if you hit control enter as you can see this is a different mark no, this is not completely failed it's not completely correct it's a warning sign it says one affected sorry and one warning if you go here and you again run this as you can see if you go down all the way to the bottom as you can see 500 they send it inserted okay so that is the use of insert ignore now if we have like let's say thousands of values and there are a few hundred two hundred conflicting ones so instead of all the queries being stopped because of just one error then the error ones will be ignored and the rest will be executed so that is the use of insert ignore so we are done with inserting data now just go quickly over what we have been through in this chapter uh, in this part so first we inserted data we inserted multiple values in the column using insert into table and then we write column names and then we write values and then we write the values inside of the braces okay and if we have multiple values then we have multiple sets of values separated by commas now we also learned how to use default value of a column using default so and then we learned inserting date and time using current date and current time function and then we learned insert into select when we want to uh, insert the values of one table into another so instead of just going insert into table and then writing values we write insert into table and then instead of values we write select blah 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 from table blah 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 all right and insert ignore is the latest thing that we saw and insert ignore is used when we want to ignore some values that might cause errors and insert the rest okay okay so now that we have inserted data now you know how to insert data you know how to insert multiple rows of data you know how to insert ignore and all the that's all the good stuff and now let's think you have used your knowledge that you have just gained your new knowledge to insert a lot of a lot of data but now you actually need to fetch that data so in this part we will learn how to you can how you can fetch the data using some queries and some other stuff so first this select asterisk you have already seen that so asterisk means all so if you select asterisk from a table then all the all the rows are returned and 
and select partial is you don't get or you don't need all the columns if you just need like let's say supplier name or supplier age or supplier number you can just get supplier number or supplier name that is much faster than getting select all so we try to avoid using select all unless it's necessary uh, we only get fetch partial data on the data that is required most of the time and select using as and this is used when you want to you know get the data from the table but you want to get the data from in a different uh, column name you don't want to use this column name that's actually there you want to uh, get it in a different name let's uh, I'll just show you an example so that you'll understand it better and select distinct is uh, as you know like let's say you want to know how many different type of names are there in in your uh, suppliers table so let's say there are 100 100 suppliers but a uh, few of you few of those have uh, the same name like two of them are called robert two of them are called sam so using select distinct you can get different different names the names that are not matching okay so let's open up workbench and get started with this code okay so here we are now let's open up our uh, customers table and now as you can see this select all from classic model dot customers gives us all the rows all the data nothing is filtered all the rows and all the columns customer number customer name customer uh, last name contact first name now these all of these are given because we have used asterisk okay so now this classic models of customers this is not actually fully required because uh, classic models is already being selected here as you can see in, it is in bold it is a database that is being used if you can remove this this will also work as you can see uh, so but by default that table is written in workbench so that's how you can do it too now we had just seen select partial now let's use that now select partial is not actually a partial is not actually a keyword you don't use that here instead of that you just write the column names let's say we just want customer name and customer number and you hit control enter and now as you can see only customer name and customer number were selected and this is much faster than selecting all the columns okay so this is pretty simple and I hope this is clear to you so if you want to see now you can actually see the, the, uh, the time of uh, fetching here but since this is uh, uh, very less data and this, this much data is nothing for a database a few hundreds data is very less now if you actually had few a few hundred thousand data you could see the difference here okay now let's again hit control enter maybe you can see catch the slight difference with your eyes okay let's see how fast your eyes are let's hit control enter now instead of these two now this was partial selection hit control all sorry uh, asterisk this is complete selection hit control enter now as you can see this was a little bit a little tiny bit slower so this is the difference between select all this is all is the asterisk and select partial uh, so it partially is you just uh, type the column names that you want all right okay so now we will be using the as keyword as with a single s so you might want to open this let's go to this customers table right and now what this as keyword helps us is it helps us to uh, change the name of a column in the return data set so when we are getting this we can change all the column names okay so that might not seem helpful to you at this moment but uh, later on when we keep on progressing and learning more and more stuff uh, there are some things when instead of this just this writing phone select phone or select contact last name contact first name instead of just writing the column name here we can also write some complex queries here so 
and that those queries can be returned as a column name so let me just give you, give you an example so if you write select phone as phone phone number from classic models that customers and you hit enter as you can see the phone the data is all the data that the phone column had but instead it is now returned as phone number so this is how you use the s keyword you can change a column name to a desired column name in the returned data set pretty simple and i hope i'm pretty clear okay okay so now we will be using the distinct keyword let's again first select all the data select all from customers now as you can see we have some data but okay let's see how many data do we have select all from customers we have 126 rows right now we want all the last names all the different last names now I cannot spot repeating data here itself but in 126 data I'm pretty sure there has to be a contact last name that is repeat right so what do we want we don't want the repeating data we just want unique last names so for that what we do is select this distinct contact last name from customers right so if we control enter as you can see this time we have 109 rows returned not 126 so that means uh, we have around how many it is 17 17 last names are being repeated so that's what we know 17 last names are being repeated okay so this is what we have and that's how you use distinct keyword to, to get distinct values not the repeating values now instead if you write if you remove this and hit control enter as you can see one 126 rows are returned and before that when we use distinct keyword we had 109 rows returned so that's how you use the distinct keyword you can also use select distinct uh, contact last name and you can use contact first name so if you do if you do something like this as you can see 126 rows are returned so what that means is whenever you are using you are using another column name with a distinct column name you get all the data okay so you not only get the unique data you get all the data okay so guys now we have learned how to insert data how to uh, select a few data according to our requirements now we'll be learning how to update data now updating data is pretty simple the query is uh, somewhat like inserting so we say insert and we don't write sorry we say update and we then write table name and then we set and the set is uh, what do you want to set you want to set a column name to what and then you set uh, another column name to what and then we need a where condition and then we will also learn how to do update ignore uh, that is similar to inserting that we had done so if some of the values cannot be updated then it will not stop the whole process it will move on to updating other values and similar to insert using select we'll do update using select and we will do update using limit now limit sets the limit on how many values will be updated so let's get started now open up your workbench now let's let's update someone from our uh, suppliers table because we this is the table that we created and let's view what we have in it we have just two people here uh, supplier number 202 and supplier number 260 now let's say the address of supplier number 202 is changed to uh, now it is 1900 Oak Street now let's say it is changed to 2100 Oak Street so <coughs> sorry so what can you do now first of all we need to identify what do we want to update so 
in this row how can you identify the supplier address let's say 1900 oak street now we can say change the street number 1900 oak street to 2100 oak street okay so but if we say that then at the moment we don't have two we don't have more than two rows but if someone else also has the same address then both of them will be updated now so what do we know what do we need to do we need to uh, find something that is that can identify this this supplier uniquely so I can say it's 202 but if you are confused uh, you can check the table like this not like this sorry just click on this and you'll see this is primary key now what is a primary key as I have told before a primary key uniquely identifies a row in the table or a data set in a table so if you move here now we don't have a primary key because we didn't enter that query when we were creating table so oh, where is it now oh, okay here we are but anyhow if we want to update this we have to identify this row using supplier number 202 and then we need to set this to 2100 oak street okay so let me show you the query let's update what is the table name suppliers set supplier address equals to what is the address 2100 oak street now if we do this this will not work okay let's hit control enter now this worked by not work i mean this will not work this will not give the result that we uh, want because now see what happened we messed up now this is also oak street this is also oak street so i don't know what the address it was but this is something you don't do it will not work like we intended to work okay okay now let's say we want to change the address of supply number 202 so how do we do it we go update uh, update suppliers and set supplier address equals to 2300 new street now this is where we set the condition where supplier number equals to 202 now if we update this sorry it's supplier name there is no supplier name name is 202 so that's why we got an error and it did not work if I change it to supplier number now this worked as you can see one row affected one row changed okay now if you go here and okay if you check the supplier table uh, again the values select all from suppliers as you can see the address is changed to 2300 new street so that is the query it's uh, simple it's oh, where is it it's update suppliers update table set the column name the value and then the conditions where we should change this thing okay this is it so that's how you update a row in a table okay guys so now we know how to update the table we are going to check out how we can update ignore uh, like we had done with insert ignore uh, similarly we can do such things with update ignore so to see how it works first uh, let's open this customers table and now as you can see here we have a bunch of uh, data with us and if you go down we can see uh, this is some random data, random data that I had entered now what we can do is let's say uh, we want to update some uh, update some rows now to demonstrate update ignore in order for that ignore to work what needs to happen is there there needs to be uh, some data that cannot be entered in the table so 
from previous lessons we know that customer name customer number needs to be unique that customer key customer number is is what it is primary key so if we try inserting a data or updating a data that conflicts uh, with the already existing numbers we will get an error so let's say if i try to make this 498 uh, to 497 there will be an error because 497 already exists right so that 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 query will be skipped that update statement will be skipped if we use update ignore so let's uh, write some SQL code so you can understand this better now let's say update customer number sorry not customer number the query is update what we need to update the table first so let's say update the tables name update table name and then we use set and then there's column name let's say update column number equals to 499 now if we run this query now it will be executed once and it will not be executed twice because uh, once there's an there's a 199 then there cannot be another 499 right so okay now instead of trying to make every customer number 499 let's put a where query as we had done another uh, select query or uh, as we had done while we were doing uh, what were we doing select thing while we were querying the data and getting some data according to some condition so similarly let's add a where condition here where let's say customer number is greater than 495 now so what does this query say it is saying we need to update the customer number of customer table and set it to 499 where customer number is greater than 499 495 so what we are saying is we need to set all of these rows we need to set the numbers in these rows 496 to 999 we need to set these five customer number to 499 so will it work will it work tell me guys will it work no it will not work because all of these rows cannot have the same customer number so if you try to run it control enter as you can see update customers uh, set this this where 495 this is error because uh, cannot delete or update a parent row of foreign key constraints fail so we will talk about that later like what the foreign key is but for now what we need to know is it didn't execute because we cannot have a duplicate customer number so what was this doing if you go back and we need to select all from customers we were we were trying to make the customer number of all the rows with customer number greater than 495 to 499 so that's why it didn't work now but since there is no 499 at the moment right there is 498 there is 497 there is 496 but there is no 499 so it should work once all right so that's what we can do with ignore statement what this ignore does is if there is an error while inserting then don't insert but if there is not then insert otherwise all this all the uh, statements or all the rows needs to be updated in case this query runs successfully so this ignore for this ignore to work oh, sorry for if we add this ignore it uh, updates if one is updated uh, it does not if there's not a bit so all the queries don't need to be sorry all the rows does not need to be updated for this to work if we add ignore okay so if I hit control enter now as you can see one row affected and four warnings that four did not four rows did not uh, change so if we go and click this and we go on here as you can see one of our rows is 499 one of our customer number is set to 499 this r11 and others are not set to 499 
why is that because there's already 499 these things cannot be 499 so that's what an update ignore does the rows that can be updated are updated and rows that cannot be updated are not updated there is no error okay only warnings now if we didn't use ignore what happens there's an error and none of the rows would be updated all right so that's how you use ignore okay so now we will be learning how to use update using select so now this example was kind of you know it was just to explain a bit ignore there was no real logical meaning behind this if I came up with a logical meaning to do this it would have been better but nonetheless here we are you know how to use update ignore so let's move ahead now as you can see there are so many customers but some of the customers have this sales rep employee number set to null as you can see some of the employees have this sales rep employee number null so if you are an if you are a customer that means you had you must have been handled by a sales rep you cannot be a customer if there was no sales guy who sold you anything so how can this some of these be null all right so what we need to do is we need to update these things and set this null to the sales rep employee number of some number of some employee so if we check the employees table as you can see there are some sales rep here okay now what we can do is we can go here and we can update this query we can update the sales rep employees number and the query is okay let's write the query here update okay you can try to write it yourself without looking update what is the table name table name is customers set the column name sales rep employee number equals to now here we write the select statement okay because what is the sales rep employee number we don't know so we select the sales rep employee number from another table all right so open parenthesis and here we write let's close it here itself because we might forget it later so and go back and in the parenthesis we write select sales rep employee number from employees table where uh, job position uh, if your job title equals to what does the job title need to be sales rep because only the sales rep can be a sales rep okay <laughs> sales rep okay now if we do this as you can see the select will return a lot of uh, employees number right because we are not re uh, we are not limiting it we are just saying select sales rep employee number from employees where job title equals to sales rep now if you copy this we can check out what it will return go here and do this hit control enter okay sales rep employee number is not a column here i think it's just employee number select emp yeah it's just employee number from employees where job title equals to sales rep now if you hit control enter as you can see there are a lot of employee numbers so all of these cannot be inserted into this one null part right so what we can do is we can limit the queries so that it only returns one so how do we do that you just do limit and enter one if you enter only one will be selected one one six five all right so let's copy this and let's put it here okay so if you try to understand the query till now what is happening is uh, we are updating the customers table and then we are setting our sales rep employee number to something that is selected that something is employee number to employee number that is selected from employees table where job title equals to sales rep and only one of the sales rep is selected okay now what this will do is this will 
if we run this since since we have no condition after this so we are just updating sales rep employee number to one of the employee number from the employees table where job title is sales rep so what is doing what this is doing is it will convert or it will change every sales rep employee number so it will change this one this 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 is all of the sales rep employee number will be changed to just or will be updated to just one employee number that is selected here so we don't want that what do we want we want to update only the rows where we have null as sales rep employee number right so we type that there this condition can be defined here how is that you guys already know where update where sales rep employee number is null now guys for this null you do not use equals to right like uh, when you are comparing integers or numbers for this null you write is okay where sales rep employee is null so if we just look at the condition forget what's forget what's happening here just check the condition where employee number is null so that means whatever is done being what is being done before this where statement that will be applied only to this this thing where sales rep employee is null okay now if we hit control enter as you can see the 26 rows were null and those 26 will be will have this 1165 as the employee number now okay now if we select all from customers here you control enter now i forgot which one was null so but there was something null here but that is not not null anymore now let's say we don't want all the 26 uh, customers that had null sales rep employee number to be uh, to be assigned the sales rep employee number let's say we just want five of those so how do you do that the same may be limited our query here with this limit thing now let's say we want to change uh, five of our five of our uh, customer rep employee number to 1165 okay without any conditions now, if we remove this if we run this everything will be 1165 now we just want to change five more of these rows to 1165 to have sales rep employee number as 1165 so to do that we just do go limit five you hit enter and you see five rows affected five rows change and now five more of the rows have 1165 as the sales rep employee number now we have learned how to update data so let's just quickly go over what we learned now firstly we learned how to update data using a simple query that is update the table name set the column name to what value another column name to what value and then if there is a condition then we write the condition and similarly we can do bit ignore and as you already know what this does is if there is an error while updating a value all of the updates are not stopped only the row in which there cannot be a value that is updated is stopped so the rest of the rows are updated now update using select and we learned update with limit now we have moved on to deleting data as you all know sometimes you delete your photos from instagram sometimes you delete your tweets Sometimes you delete a lot of stuff so those data need to be deleted now i am not sure if facebook actually deletes what you delete maybe they do maybe they don't but if they did here's how you do it now if they don't they just hide your photos or whatever now if you want to delete let's see how we will delete and now we will also see how to delete with limit now you now you probably understand how limit works so limit is if you don't want to delete infinitely you just add a limit you want to delete five rows you just limit add limit five so since that is pretty clear for to you by now let's just jump right into code okay so let's say some of the customers are just test data they're not real for example this one 999 
so what you can do is uh, you just go delete now you don't go all in this delete it's uh, you you just have this all part in just the select part select query right this asterisk all now what you do is what do you want to delete you want to delete this data fake data right let's say this 999 is fake data so you go delete similar to update we write from and then a not update not similar to update similar to select now this is now a plain english now it's somewhat easier because this is kind of like english where do you want to delete from you want to delete from table customers now what do you want to delete what is the condition delete wherever the data is fake right so delete from customers where now if this was advanced stuff very much you know using AI and machine learning maybe we could write where data equals to fake but this is not that we are not there yet so what we do is we delete where customer number equals to 999 all right if you hit Control enter and now if we select you can see the data is deleted all right now let's say if you want to delete uh, five of the rows those that are greater than 480 right so what do you do okay I'll not speak I'll just quietly type so you can also not look here and quietly type in your computer okay I am done you might want to take your time and the time stops now <laughs> all right so let's review the query so what we are doing is this much is pretty same we just go delete from customers where where do you want to delete wherever the row and customer number is greater than 480 but how many do you want to delete you just want to delete five right not all of the not all of these so I have added limit five now if you hit control enter as you can see cannot delete or update a parent row so now what this means is this is linked somewhere right if we select again now we cannot delete this as of now because this is definitely linked somewhere maybe they have bought some products so what happens if we delete them the products are sold but to whom they are sold there is a you know this is a, a dilemma those are sold but since there are no items no customers who are they sold to so that there is kind of a referential constraint that is kept here that is in place that's why we cannot delete it see this is something that you learned that you didn't expect to learn at the moment we will definitely look more into it when in the upcoming chapters but for now let's say where Now, I don't know if we can delete any of these because maybe all of these have some, uh, you know, bought some products in the table, products table, uh, where do not select, delete from customers where customer number is greater than, let's just reduce our scope. Let's say customer number is greater than 498 and now let's just limit it to one so only one will be deleted okay this 499 should be deleted if this 499 has not bought any products let's hit control enter and yes seems like 499 was had not bought any anything so if we go select all from customers hit control enter now we should not have any 499 there we go so that's how you do delete with limit so finally we are at this last part of this chapter and in this one we will be learning how to replace data so 
you know you can use replace uh, instead of insert or instead of whatever update this is kind of similar but you need to know when to use it okay now if you understand how this works you'll be able to choose where to use it so first uh, simply we will be doing replace into table this and these are the column names values this so this is exactly like the insert statement in, instead of it uh, instead of insert we are changing it to replace that is all as you can see this is exactly the same as insert if you replace this replace with insert it becomes insert into table column 1 column 2 values value 1 value 2 value 2 value 3 kind of that and similarly with the select statements with the sorry with uh, this select thing insert into table 1 column list select column list from table 2 where the where condition so exactly like insert now how it is different we will see right now uh, we have been working a lot with uh, employees table so let's try to do something with supply table for the moment so open up a supplies table now keep this in mind guys this is very important thing whenever you are using replace you need to use it on a table that has a unique or a primary key so uh, that's because uh, that is the column or sorry that is the row that will be replaced right the one with unique or primary key and if you have that value if you're inserting a value that is already present that is the row that will be that will be replaced okay so at the moment uh, when we made this table we did not create any primary key right so click this button let's make this the primary key right and hit apply okay click finish that means that this is the primary key and it cannot be duplicate okay so let's say by mistake we made this name supplier name Canadian gift exchange network right but we want this to be what do we want it to be we want it to be we want it to be let's say American gift network so what we do is similar to in insert replace into table name suppliers what value do you want to replace the name supplier num number this is necessary just like we talked because the primary key or unique key is necessary here supplier supplier name replace this into this and then the values right the values of the supplier number that we want to replace is 202 comma the name is American exchange network now how this works behind the scene is first it tries to insert this thing okay it does not have to replace it tries to insert now if it cannot be inserted now it cannot be inserted because 202 already exists right so if it cannot be inserted it will delete this 202 row so this will be deleted and then this will be inserted all right so let's hit control enter as you can see two rows affected why is that saying two i had i don't know properly so let's just see if this worked or not Add it here. It worked now. I think it is saying two rows affected because once this is deleted and once it is inserted again, so that's why it's saying two rows affected because this one is deleted, that row is no more. One row affected again, a new row is inserted, that is one more. So that is why it is saying two rows affected, right? Now, if we do the same thing, right, but instead of 202, we write to one two what do you think will happen just see to check it out Hit control enter and now if we run this again as you can see nothing is replaced now this is entered why is it not replaced because the primary key or the unique key that is this one tries to insert this first 
Now it is it can be successfully inserted because 212 is not there so it just simply inserts and this time you, as you see only one row is affected so that's how replace works guys now let's check out how to use select with this replace thing so first of all let's think that with the, the thing that we just inserted this American Exchange Network this is not what we inserted we wanted to insert Royal Canadian collectibles and we did a mistake so what can we do is we can insert uh, sorry we can update as you have learned how to update or we can delete and then insert again that also how you know how to do that but let's try to do this with that with replace you know in programming there are always multiple ways to do one thing you need to find out which way is the best okay so again do replace into suppliers you want to replace supplier number comma supplier name and here we use select select now these are the three things that we are. let's do supplier address also now these are the three things that are in this table there is nothing more so we can do select all here select all from suppliers where so we want this to have this supplier name and this supplier address right so here we do where supplier number is 260 all right guys Uh, we have been working a lot with uh, employees table so let's try to do something with supplies table for the moment so open up your supplies table now keep this in mind guys this is very important thing whenever you are using replace you need to use it on a table that has a unique or a primary key so uh, that's because uh, that is the column or sorry that is the row that will be replaced right the one with unique or primary key and if you have that value if you're inserting a value that is already present that is the row that will be that will be replaced okay so at the moment uh, when we made this table we did not create any primary key right so click this button let's make this the primary key right and hit apply okay finish that means that this is the primary key and it cannot be duplicate okay so let's say by mistake we made this name supplier name Canadian gift exchange network right but we want this to be what do we want it to be we want it to be we want it to be let's say American gift network so what we do is similar to in insert replace into table name suppliers what value do you want to replace the name supplier num number this is necessary just like we talked because a primary key or a unique key is necessary here supplier supplier name replace this into this and then the values right the values of the supplier number that we want to replace is 202 comma the name is American Exchange Network. Now, how this works behind the scene is first it tries to insert this thing. Okay, it does not have to replace, it tries to insert. Now, if it cannot be inserted, now it cannot be inserted because 202 already exists, right? So, if it cannot be inserted, it will delete this 202 row. So, this will be deleted and then this will be inserted all right so let's hit control enter as you can see two rows affected why is that saying two i had i don't know properly so let's just see if this worked or not Let's add it here. 
it worked. Now I think it is saying two rows affected because once this is deleted and once it is inserted again. So that's why it's saying two rows affected because this one is deleted, that row is no more. One row affected. Again, a new row is inserted, that is one more. So that is why it is saying two rows affected, right? Now, if we do the same thing, right? But instead of 202, we write 212. What do you think will happen? Just see to check it out. Okay, control enter. And now if we run this again, as you can see, nothing is replaced. Now this is entered. Why is it not replaced? Because the primary key or the unique key, that is this one, tries to insert this first. Now it is it can be successfully inserted because 212 is not there, so it just simply inserts. And this time, you, as you see, only one row is affected. So that's how replace works, guys. So congratulations, guys. You are not done with chapter 3. Now, in this chapter, we basically learned how to insert data, how to query data, how to update, delete, and replace data. So congratulations, congratulate yourselves. Be proud of yourselves. You have learned the basic operations. Now we are leveling up. Time to level up now. Okay, so be prepared. Study do the homework and I will see you in the next chapter.